Hi, PETA. We are a group of students from a social psychology class at Pacific Lutheran University. We have been assigned the task of evaluating the methods of persuasion and compliance used by a nonprofit organization, and we chose you. Through observation of your in-person solicitations and ad campaigns, we want to note what you are doing well, but also offer suggestions to help improve your current methods to better serve your target audience. Through careful analysis of your flyers, we've identified many of your methods that we find effective. For instance, we like the use of pamphlets that target large farming industries. By targeting industry use of hormones, chemicals, and hazardous materials, people feel righteous indignation over their own mistreatment. People desire to donate money to an organization that is trying to protect and help them. The strategy of targeting the industry works much better than putting the blame on individuals themselves making them feel targeted, defensive, and unwilling to listen. Also, the clear guidelines on manner of dress for your pamphleteers works well. Encouraging volunteers to purchase PETA shirts helps them to identify as part of the group. To onlookers, your organization is displayed and represented. By promoting individuals to wear modest clothing, such as t-shirts and jeans, you create similarity between your audience and the representatives, increasing the chances that your representatives will be seen as likable. This likability will attract more people or at least prevent them from running away. There is another effective tactic you already use to get compliance. People like to be consistent and stick with their values. You take advantage of this consistency with the tactic called foot in the door. This tactic requires that you get your audience to comply with a small request. By gaining compliance with a small request, you get your foot in the door and are then able to ask for a bigger request as people want to be consistent with their compliance. When soliciting, you get people to take a pamphlet, small request. When people are interested, you then ask them for their phone number, a greater request. This will allow you later to call them and ask for money or ask them to solicit others, a greater request. That said, you could use that tactic even better. You can use the foot in the door tactic to greater effect by pairing it with another tactic, labeling. For example, start off by asking people, don't you think animals should be treated well? People will agree with you, as they want to be seen as likable. You can then label them by saying, Oh, you're a great person! Followed by asking, Would you let me show you how you can make a positive difference? With having just been labeled as being great, people will want to be consistently seen as great by agreeing with your simple request. In two questions, you have already set a pattern of compliance, and getting them to take an outstretched flyer or brochure easily gets you to the third agreement. Now asking for an email and then a phone number is much easier. You might even be able to ask for a donation on the spot. We notice that you discourage your pamphleteers from engaging in distracting conversations. While we recognize that this method allows them to approach a greater quantity of people, We'd like to argue that you are sacrificing the quality of your arguments and convictions. Your audience desires accurate information. We suggest preparing a manual on how to answer common questions so that your pamphleteers can knowledgeably and consistently engage in conversations with their audience. This accuracy establishes credibility with your audience, allowing them to forge a greater connection to PETA, making them more likely to donate time and money in the future. This can help prevent people giving out misleading information verbally or visually that may ruin your credibility, causing your audience to ignore your argument. One thing you are doing that may be defeating your efforts is handing out your daddy kills animal pamphlets to people who are fishing. Reactance theory states that messages that are seen as taking away people's rights to do something, such as fishing, will actually increase their preference to do that behavior. These increased behaviors often hurt PETA's end goal. For example, if you tell people about to go coat shopping that they shouldn't buy fur, people will see PETA as taking away their right to buy a coat and will react to the perceived threat by buying more and more coats. People will only see the threat to freedom, not the fact that animals were raised in slaughter to produce the coat. At the heart of it all, the big issue we came across is your organization defines success in terms of press coverage. With this goal in mind, you have made PETA into a household name. However, not all press is good press. Your controversial campaigns depicting horrifying images or explicit sexuality have received negative feedback. While your message is certainly received, it is not always received well. People don't want to listen to your messages or be associated to PETA because of these horrifying messages. We'd like to propose this question. Which is more important? 
recognition, or support.